With movies like Hackers, The Net, and the blockbuster The Matrix, Hollywood was seeing the potential in exploiting the computer hacker subculture. Skip Woods, who had just written and directed his first film, Thursday, wanted to capitalize on this trend and wrote an action crime thriller called Swordfish. The script was about a hacker who's recruited into a team that's trying to steal $9 billion from a failed government operation called Swordfish. The password Swordfish is taken from the 1932 Marx Brothers movie, Horse Feathers. And don't let anyone in without the password. All right, what is it? Swordfish is the password, do you understand? Okay, I got it. Well, what is it? Password. Swordfish! Swordfish! Right, the swordfish, the swordfish. Uh... It's been used in everything from Night Court to The Adventures of Sam and Max, as well as hacker movies like The Net and Hackers. Various directors were attached to the film, but none of them stayed with it. The film hinged on the villain Gabriel, and they unanimously agreed it should be played by John Travolta. The only problem was Travolta was sent the script, and he turned the film down six times. The movie was produced by Joel Silver, who is responsible for producing some of the best action movies of all time. Everything from Commando to Lethal Weapon to Predator to The Matrix. He saw the potential in Swordfish and didn't want to let it go. The script was sent to director Dominic Cena, who immediately loved it. After the success of Gone in 60 Seconds, Cena was sent all kinds of scripts. He said that Swordfish was the first one he read where he genuinely didn't know what was going to happen. Cena had been working in the industry since the 80s, directing commercials and music videos like Rockwell's Somebody's Watching Me and Janet Jackson's Rhythm Nation. He gained a lot of attention in 1993 for directing the unusual crime thriller, California. Cena also agreed that Travolta was the perfect person for the film. He wanted someone who could play a character that was both evil and likable. And after Travolta's Oscar-nominated performance in Pulp Fiction, he knew he could pull it off. He managed to set up a meeting with him and pitch his ideas for the film. Travolta liked his ideas so much, he finally agreed to do the movie. Now with the villain in place, they started to look for the hero. The casting director suggested Hugh Jackman. Jackman's career had just exploded after the hugely successful X-Men, but Cena didn't think that was the right film to gauge his acting chops. Jackman had been working on Australian TV shows like Corelli and Snowy River, which Cena watched and was so impressed, he sent a copy of the script to his agent. While at a party celebrating the success of the X-Men, Jackman's agent told him about the movie. He described a scene where a computer hacker was forced at gunpoint to crack into a government database while simultaneously receiving a blowjob. He thought it was absolutely insane, but was intrigued. He was leaving to shoot the film Someone Like You, which at the time was called Animal Husbandry, and met the director at LAX before his flight. Cena explained the film and gave him a copy of the script to read on the plane. He read the opening sequence and was sold. Cena wanted a guy like Jackman to play Stanley because in his mind, the hacker was a cool hacker, like in William Gibson novels, rather than a nerd. For the part of Ginger, Joel Silver suggested Halle Berry, who was also coming off of the success of the X-Men. For the character of Roberts, Cena only wanted Don Cheadle. Sam Shepard was hired to play the corrupt senator. Cena originally wanted Nick Nolte, but agreed Shepard would be the better choice. Cena worked with Vinnie Jones on Gone in 60 Seconds, so he hired him again to play Gabriel's lead henchman, Marco. While Cena was happy with the script overall, he worked with Woods to change a few things. In an early draft of the script, Roberts gets killed in the second act. Cena spoke to the studio and managed to convince them to let him live. They also added that Roberts had a history of following Stanley, which made their interactions that much more intense. They hired a tech consultant to help with all the technical jargon. They kept some of his suggestions, but had to alter certain things for the benefit of the audience. Since the director and even the cast weren't very tech-savvy, the consultant met with them and gave them a crash course in hacking. With everything in place, they began filming. The movie was filmed mostly in and around Los Angeles, California. Some of the streets where they filmed the car chase were the same ones used in Gone in 60 Seconds. The diner the car crashes into in the car chase was a set they built at the end of an alley. The club was a warehouse in downtown LA that they redressed. Gabriel's mansion was previously owned by Frank Sinatra and was called Farallone. Sinatra had the $12 million palace built in the 40s specifically for parties. It's located in Chatsworth, California, but they digitally replaced the background to make it appear to be in downtown LA. The airport scenes were filmed in LAX. The security rooms were sets built inside one of the main lobbies. They were allowed to do this because airport protocol and security wasn't as strict back before 9-11. The hacker Axel Torvalds was an homage to Linux creator Linus Torvalds. The opening monologue was Travolta's favorite part and one of the main reasons he signed on to do the film. In the script, it was a bit different. Originally, the scene was just a blank screen with nothing but the Gabriel voiceover. As you can imagine, having a four-minute opening scene with nothing but dialogue would have the audience thinking that something went wrong with the projector. 
They changed it to Gabriel speaking directly into the camera. Cena wanted to keep the audience focused on Gabriel, so he shot the scene with a special lens that was able to stay on him while blurring the surroundings. Cena wanted to make the opening as memorable as possible, so they developed this elaborate explosion as the showstopper. One of the hostages is wearing C4 strapped with ball bearings, and when it goes off, it kills her and shreds the surroundings. They used the camera rig from the Matrix to get this 360 sweep around the blast to emphasize the destruction. Most of this was practical, but some of it was CGI composites. Cena didn't lift the effect from the Matrix, rather it was an effect he had used previously in some of the commercials he directed. Drea De Matteo was on The Sopranos at the time, and came in for one day to shoot her scenes as Stanley's ex-wife. The director gave her her motivation. Make the audience hate you immediately. For the infamous blowjob scene, they shot two versions. One with, and one without. After going over the footage, they all agreed the scene worked better with it in there. Even the actress giving the fake blowjob said so. Although when the scene runs on TV, they are using the footage without the blowjob. It was Don Cheadle's idea to hit the guy with the door. The hill chase had three different locations, edited to appear as one. Falling down in the dirt was one hill, sliding down the plastic was another, and finally winding up on a beach nowhere near the other two hills. Most of the monitors in the movie were filmed blank, and they added graphics in them in post. Jackman had a musical theater background, and before starring in the X-Men, he was Curly in the TV adaptation of Oklahoma. Travolta wanted to keep the mood on the set light, so if there was any downtime, he pulled Jackman aside and sang songs from Grease, Oklahoma, and other musicals. In the club scene, he had the crew turn the music up and insisted that everyone dance. Much like the explosion in the beginning, the director wanted to make a memorable chase towards the end. In the script, the finale was a shootout in an airport. This seemed too cliche to him, so he came up with something different. They used an Ericsson air crane helicopter, a vehicle that primarily lifts heavy objects like air conditioner units, onto the top of skyscrapers. They gutted the bus and had it down to 15,000 pounds, even though the helicopter can lift up to 25,000 pounds. Some folks thought the sequence was CG, but they really did fly a bus through downtown LA. They spoke to the officials and were able to get the permits to do so. The sequence was shot over two days. They plotted a course through LA and filmed it with 18 cameras placed at different locations. There was some CG, but it was things like the sign that the bus crashed through. The building the bus smashed into was a set built on a hill. The roof of the skyscraper was a set because the bus was too heavy to land on a real one. Some scenes with the bus were shot inside an aircraft hangar. For certain scenes, there were actors inside, and for the dangerous moments, they used stuntmen. While the movie was in production, it was leaked out that this would be Holly Berry's first nude scene. Her salary for the film was $2 million, and she agreed to do a topless scene for an additional $500,000. They were supposed to film the scene in one day. It ended up taking three. The first day they had to stop because it started raining. The second day they got Hugh Jackman's reactions, and then it started raining again. Day three was a lovely sunny day, and they were able to shoot the scene. Barry said that in the end she was happy it took so long, because by the third day she no longer cared and it helped her performance. It also helped her to get over her fear of nudity, which in turn led to her getting an Oscar for Best Actress in Monsters Ball a year later. The original ending had Stanley outsmarting Gabriel, stealing back the $9 billion and giving it to different charities. The director fought with the studio to change it. The whole movie was about misdirection, and having Stanley outsmart Gabriel, who was playing everyone the entire film, seemed too conventional. They were able to change it so that Gabriel got away with it. It was the only ending that truly made sense. The film was released on June 8, 2001 and opened in first place with $18 million. It went on to pull in about $147 million in its run, which barely covered its $102 million budget. Cena was sad that this didn't do better because he liked it way more than Gone in 60 Seconds. Despite delivering a solid performance and beautifully skirting the line of good and evil, Travolta was nominated for a Razzie for Worst Actor. While Swordfish may not be as memorable as other Silver Classic productions, it definitely is one of the most creative. Travolta, Barry, Cheadle, and Jackman all play off each other well, and while it does occasionally veer into tech mumbo jumbo silly town, it's no worse than your standard episode of NCIS. I'm getting hacked. A port scheme? No, no, this is major. We'll isolate the node and dump them on the other side of the router. I'm trying, it's moving too fast. Oh, this is not good. Travolta's scene-chewing dialogue makes the film a lot of fun, and despite what the Razzies say, I thought his monologues were terrific. With the constant misdirections and double crosses, the film was definitely smarter than the average action film. It certainly didn't deserve to be dismissed as stupid. 
While working on the film, Warner Brothers asked the Hacker Quarterly magazine 2600 if they could use the magazine and name within the film. Seems the rights department wasn't in contact with the legal department, or they would have known that Warner Brothers was one of the companies suing 2600 at the time for linking to the program DECSS, which was the first program to get around copyright protection and decrypt DVDs. Not surprisingly, the magazine said no. Thank you. You've just let my client go free. You denied his right to counsel, assault and battery. Excuse me. Jan, you ain't the dick. 